first things first, Jack, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> I'm good. Do you have a first musical memory? Um, I don't have a particular first musical memory, but I think my, the, the first time that music really struck a chord for me was in the car with my folks. Uh, my dad is Italian. Mm. My mom is German, Polish, but born in England. And in the summertime, we used to go, we used to f fly to Switzerland where my grandparents lived, but then drive to Italy, to the coast for the summer. And that drive was always this kind of massive education in music. And it would be, not, not arguments, but it would definitely be my mom and my dad playing their different music that would influence them. And my dad was very Italian music, mm. a lot of stuff from the 60s mainly. Um, and my mom was a lot of stuff from the 60s, but more, she was very into American music. Okay. Very California, a mix between Motown and sort of California. So that was my earliest memory is being in the backseat of the car and just kind of watching Italy go by with the soundtrack. Are there okay. some songs or, or maybe an album that still is with you? Uh, definitely for my dad. Uh, he listened to a lot of Chris Christopherson, okay. um, uh, a lot of Johnny Cash. Okay. But he also listened to a lot of Lucio Battisti, which is an Italian artist, Lucio Dalla. Um, and those were very effective to me. My mom was more on the sort of, she listened to a lot of soulful Motown, so Marvin Gaye was very big. Mm -hmm. um, but she also liked Crosby, Stills and Nash, The Eagles, James Taylor. So it was kind of... It wasn't one particular album, it was always like a, a mixture of all that. And am I correct in saying that before you took up music, you were writing? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big <laughs> word. I, I, always wa I wanted to be a writer when I was in okay. high school, uh, but I wasn't good enough. And then I wanted to be a musician, but I wasn't good enough. <laughs> so I kind of combined the two things and became a singer-songwriter. Um, and that was a way that I could put two forms of art I really liked, but wasn't necessarily disciplined enough to become really good at it. And I found a way that I could express myself, express what I was trying to say, basically. Yeah, what did that, especially writing, because that was the first thing, what did that do for you at the, when you started doing? I think it stopped me from, uh, I don't want to say it's, you know, I don't want to throw the cliche, it saved my life, but mm. it genuinely did have a big impact on stopping me from going where I really shouldn't have gone. I think it, it happens during adolescence, teenage years, it pretty much always complicated for anybody, however good your life is or bad, or it's all pretty relative. I think at that age, especially at that age where you are the center of the universe and right. all you know is yourself. And I think at that point, you know, like all teenagers, I was going through various changes and seeing things change around me and I didn't really know how to grasp them. This turned all the sort of anxiety, sadness at times, love, even happiness, it turned it into something productive. Mm -hmm. So it became bigger than myself. It wasn't just about me, 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 me. It became about the music. It could go somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it went somewhere, it belonged to other people. So it stopped myself having the pressure of, of feeling too, too much, <laughs> I guess. It's kind of sharing your, 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 your feelings, sharing, that, that is what sharing your feelings is. So I think in that respect, it, it was therapy. It was a really good therapy to me. If we then fast forward to Written in Scars, has your approach to the music and, and what you get out of it changed in all those years? I thought it was changing okay. uh, and that's why I was about to stop mm. the music business because I was kind of, I didn't like why I was writing, I didn't like why people were asking me to write, what they were asking me to write. It suddenly became, uh, it just, it lost, it was, had nothing to do with me, it just became a job. Um, and that's when I decided to sort of walk away from the music industry and ironically the minute I walked away I remembered that style of writing. I, you, you, you know, it's very easy you, to forget why when you're 16 or 15 or 14 you mm. pick up a guitar and write a song, especially when you start dealing with contracts, uh, lawyers, management, sales, numbers, suddenly your approach, of course it's going to change, right. there, there's no way to avoid that. But it's very important to remind yourself consistently as to why you started. And I think with this album, I was able to find that purely out of, I think, pride. It was just a thing where I decided to, to turn my back on what I didn't like and start from zero. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I genuinely really sacrificed things to do this. And that's when I, I think, confirmed to myself that this is the only thing I want to do. What kind of things did you have to sacrifice to get where you are now then? Um, a lot of... A lot of money, <laughs> uh, a lot of li like things that I would have loved to have done, mm. a lot of time, a lot of, not necessarily friends, but I took chances 
I would rather work with friends than with the professionals. Um, and that happened because when I did work with the professionals, it, I got hurt. I got mm -hmm. hurt um, financially. Um, I got hurt at a time where I was young, getting married, having children. And people that I had trusted in were some suddenly going out of their way to make my life very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And it was exactly everything I w was noticing in the industry I didn't like suddenly hit me like a fist all at once. And so I could have stayed. I could have kept going as things mm -hmm. were. And I never would have been able to make an album like this. Um, and I never would have been able to feel the way I do about the music I make today. But I probably would have made a lot more money <laughs> and done other things. So it was a really hard choice at that stage in my life being young, being married, having a child arriving, to say no to that mm -hmm. and to follow, you know, principles or, and, and, and I didn't think I had that in me. Okay. And it was only because of the people I surrounded myself, I didn't have that in me actually, it was only because of the people around me that I had the courage, still today, to, to keep doing. Do you remember what the first song was that you wrote after this turning point where you started to focus more on yourself? And it started on the previous album, okay. Before the Storm. That was the album that came out of me having enough. And I think you can hear it in that album. There was a lot of anxiety before the storm. That's, mm -hmm. I was literally, I knew that I was turning my back on everything I knew and starting fresh. Um, and that was, you can see there's anxiety, fear, anger. Written in Scars is more about triumph. Okay. It was we didn't know we could do that and then that album worked it didn't shoot us into any stratosphere of success but it allowed us to keep doing this the way we wanted to do it mm -hmm. and that was the biggest reward we could get at that, at that phase and written in scars is a way of sort of saying don't give up even if you got the scars make you know that's how you write your stories in your scars what is, is there a song if we had to pick one is there a song that kind of sticks out for you then or, or that kind of started it off from written in scars yeah well, the song written in Scars was the bridge okay. um, from the old sound of the previous album, mm. but the meanings were changing. So the musicality was quite similar, okay. but the, 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 uh, the sort of w w where it was all coming from for me had changed. Suddenly there was this sense of it's time to take responsibility mm. uh, for, for, for what we're doing and to also be proud of it. Um, and to stand up and to acknowledge that this is our time, my time, our time. And it was a kind of bigger thing of sort of saying, we can't come back and do this again. Mm -hmm. And I, we are written in scars, it's kind of based on that from a social point of view, I mm -hmm. guess, like a, a generational point of view, is that remember that you can't come back and do this again. Make sure your generation counts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Make sure it's, you do something good rather than look back on your generation with guilt or with remorse. And I think it's the same person. Okay. You know, it's time to you know, be the best you can be. Is your connection to the songs, um, maybe when you sing them at home or when you write or when you um, play them on stage, has it changed then since uh, three, four years ago? I think it's changed because the guys on stage have changed. Okay. And the guys, well, not all of them. Pedro, my guitarist, has been with me for 10 years. But slowly, slowly, it's, it's really hard to build a group of people around you that can, that all feel the same, are trying to push the same direction. Um, not necessarily whether you're right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just about pushing the same direction. And from that, you really, you, you get really inspired. You get fed because you get confident and, and you get better. And I think I'm, I'm very grateful to having built that around me because now things are different. Every time I go on stage, in the past, I've toured a lot alone. Yeah. For about seven to eight years, I toured a lot alone. And I loved it. But it would be tough for me to do that again now that I know what it's like to tour with the guys that I do tour with, the musicians I do tour with, and now it really is making music every night. It's not just me singing songs. I pref bring the songs, but it's also we also make music on stage, and I think that's that's what's changed. Mm -hmm. The music's gotten better. And if you look towards the future, then you say, um, well, before the storm was was that anxiety and fear, then triumph over this fear. Where do you see uh, your next? Uh, project or you're, uh, if you're already yeah. writing, where, where is your head at now? I don't have a, an exact idea for that about we've because I've only just sort of started mm. contemplating that, more than contemplating I've only just started having songs show up. Right. <laughs> um, I always think that's how it is. It's like you just got to 
grab one of those guitars and it's like a lightning rod and you just got to hope that something shows up and sometimes it doesn't and that's it recently things are starting to boil again but i don't i wouldn't be able to tell you what it is as a as a whole because i haven't written most of it yet if any of it i've only just started conceptualizing it so to speak so i don't I don't know. I'm curious because I'm usually a passenger when it comes to that as well. It's rare that I wake up one morning and say, now I'm going to write an album about this. Usually it just happens and then you look. It's like a photo album. You don't think, this is what I'm going to do for the next two years. But then suddenly you look at the photo album and you're like, yeah, that's exactly what I felt like doing for those two years. Or you look back on it and go, oof, what was I thinking <laughs> with that? So it's the same thing okay. when you make an album. It's, that for me, it's the same thing. Okay. Thank you very much for your Thank time. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks very much.